Hi and welcome to today's update. A um, few things we're going to talk about today is the, the banking collapse in the US. So uh, let's talk about that and understand any risks there and things to look out for as this unravels. Um, in that we're going to talk a little bit about exchange traded funds um, and we're also going to talk about performance numbers over time. So let's kick off with the collapse of this uh, bank in the US and try to get a bit of context and should we be concerned. So in the US, they've got a different banking system that it's been more regulated, just like the Australian bank system since the GFC. Now, for those of uh, you who are around in the, in the GFC, which all of you were, but if you're invested, which you probably were, um, and uh, I was advising through that time as well, it was pretty scary. And it started off with some bank collapses. So uh, that's creating people to be concerned now around this again. So is this the same or not? Well, things aren't always the same, but we can look at some current themes. Interest rates are on the rise. And that's putting pressure on uh, parts of the economy. Initially, it's on that um, home borrowers and, and people worried about interest rates going up and cash flow. But then it starts to flow through to those perhaps banks that have got high risk. Now, in Australia, we've got a really uh, good and bad. We've got a concentrated banking system and the big banks here uh, survived the GFC, maybe just, uh, and are in pretty good shape now, in better shape than they probably ever have been. So at this stage, um, can't see any major concerns for the Australian Australian banks. But when we look at the US banking system, it's quite common, relatively common for a bank to collapse there. They've got uh, lots and lots of banks all over the place and um, they're quite concentrated in geography and sector. And in this case, um, the banks have been concentrated in that tech sector and affected by crypto and things like that. So probably not gonna concern us directly, but as we see this sift out, we'll see what does that flow on to. So what do we look for? Well, if we're invested in, um, so high interest mortgage funds, the ones we're advertised on the radio every morning, which we're not, then you'd be a little bit concerned. Again, that, that'd be my view, that some of these uh, higher risk sort of uh, investments are, are, that are effectively lending money are gonna come under a bit of pressure. Uh, then liquidity, so when people start calling on money, um, investments that are unlisted or don't have much liquidity come under pressure, and then you get a run on that. Um, so again, our general principle is we don't have any exposure to those sort of investments. We've got hugely diversified portfolios, Nothing to worry about there uh, in the short term. Uh, so anything that you know, anything that's high risk or you've got a concentrated portfolio, which of course we don't recommend, then that's something you should be worried about uh, as as these interest rates go up and we start to see some of these banks and other corporates that come under a bit of pressure. Uh, again, the US situation is very different to Australia, but of course a lot of markets are connected and it does does flow through. Any quick questions or concerns? That's what we're here for. Please, please reach out. Um, that leads us into exchange traded funds. So uh, I think I've been advising now since uh, just around the year 2000, so 23 years just about. And um, when exchange traded funds came to the market, I was actually on a little video when they were launched here. Um, and they've become quite popular. Um, we use a little bit of them. Um, but we've got to remember, exchange traded funds are managed funds. They're just traded on the stock exchange. They're not very different in structure to a normal managed fund. So we see a lot of talk around exchange traded funds. They're not that different. Uh, yes, we, we do use them, but we don't use them for like an individual share. We, we see that in the market where people have got 50 different ETFs and they've got all sorts of different things to be crazy, uh, not really what they're for. They're mainly built to have a diversified portfolio, low cost portfolio. You can have certain themes, um, for example, gold. You can buy a gold ETF and if you're interested, let us know. There's reasons why we haven't included gold in portfolios because of volatility and it's like an income, but for some portfolios, there's a, a small allocation um, can make sense. Um, you can also have other commodities, you can access different parts of the market. So I uh, just show you where we we're all over ETFs, we talk to ETF providers and we'll, um, we'll be updating you more on some of the, the themes going on there. Last thing I want to talk about was performance. So behind me here is uh, the US market from 1970 all the way to just about today. Um, lots of data there, it's from a book, just a second. Let me go through this. This is called the Matrix book. It's released by Dimensional every year. This is their largest version. It's got every market in the world. Um, as you can see here, all the data, performance data tracked. And you can see if you're invested from, uh, so here, for example, global large companies, if you're invested from 1975, and what your return would have been to today. And on this screen here, which I'll bring this up a bit closer just for a second, if you can see that. Uh, what we've got here is, um, you know, again, your, your numbers all the way through. I won't go through how we, how we actually work this out, um, on a, on a, but we can show you how, if you're investing in a certain year, what your accumulated return would look like. And all this red around here was initially the, the dot-com crisis and then the GFC 
uh, etc. So the reason I'm not trying to bamboozle people with lots of numbers, but what we look at, particularly in times like this, is we go back and look at the history and say well, what happened in certain other other years and how do we how do we mitigate that? How do we diversify to give the smoothest possible return through volatility and, and good years? Um, and then we can blend that together and, and we can look at that data. We can look at the numbers monthly, uh, annually, obviously, daily, and just see how things perform. So if you're interested in that sort of detail, reach out again. We obviously love going through these sort of numbers. Uh, more than happy to share that. But that's how we end up coming out to a full diversified portfolio, uh, high level, and starting with that asset allocation and building it down into the different sectors. Um, okay, and if you would like a copy, we can get copies of this whole book as well. Happy to share it on PDF or hard copy. All right, thanks for listening today. Talking about the US bank collapse, uh, reach out if there's any concerns or questions. Again, our portfolios are not exposed in any major way to that sort of thing. Huge diversification, you'll be okay there. Illiquidity, we do look for if there are investments outside our sort of model type uh, scenarios, then we will be looking at that in the next few months. ETFs, um, most, uh, I think we've got a pretty good understanding, but again, if that's something that pops up, please ask, and uh, a bit on the performance and the history of, uh, history of numbers. Thanks for listening in. Uh, again, please do reach out, email, call, uh, and make a time if you've got questions.